this is kind of corny, but I think that if you can ever talk to God, math would be the language. Because I don't think we could truly understand God, and I don't necessarily think we can ever reach what we can say. So I think that would be the closest. And, and it's true, because mathematics are, is the language of the physical world. So the more we try to understand our world and our lives is the more we understand uh, the universe and ourselves. And mathematics is the way to do it, as far as I'm concerned. Math is permanent. Knowledge in math, you know, from the time of the Greeks to the Arabs to the Indians, whatever has been found is still true, is still useful. So there's a permanence about math that is very beautiful. If you like games, if you like puzzles, if you like patterns, structure, math is a subject that you're bound to like. So math, of course, has a usefulness to it, but that's not the only side of math. I think that's the part of math that people who are not math people see the most about math. But people who are math people actually do it not necessarily for its usefulness. They do math because it has a sort of a beauty to it. It has a sort of a, a feeling of an art. When you solve a nice math problem, a mathematician won't be satisfied with just the solution. They'll look for the nicest solution. And that's one of the things you can spot in a kid as to whether they really have a passion for math. They're not just interested in answers. They're interested in general themes that lead to answers. Not for useful reasons just to see if there is a nice way to do a problem. The first phase of this project was investigating what's the educational landscape like in New York City for underserved middle school students. Setting up the selection process was a big challenge, actually, because we don't know what math they've seen and what math they've really internalized. I didn't want to do it with any of the traditional metrics. We're looking for the kids that tinker with math questions, we're looking for the kids that maybe realize how to solve a problem before you've actually told them how to solve it, but maybe then they tune out. That's okay with us. The obstacles included that it would look like another test and students were tested out. They typically talk about math education in one of two ways. They talk about it either as literacy or as workforce development. So if they're talking about it as literacy, what they're saying is that people should have a basic math understanding to live better lives and to be better citizens. I think math literacy is hugely important, although that's not the goal of our program. I suppose that our program would be classified under workforce development, although I find this name a little bit strange. So workforce development is enabling people to be engineers or researchers or, you know, careers that really use math very strongly. There's a huge concern in this country that we have equity in education, that kids at underserved schools have the same opportunities as kids at, at more well-to-do schools. The paradox there is that the very system that we have to measure how effective schools at serving their students removes a lot of opportunity for creating an intellectual environment that we really value. For this program, we wanted to find students who show high potential but really, really are out of the loop. To do that, we set a criterion. You have to use a proxy. The proxy we're using is that 75% or more of the students qualify for free lunch. And that's a typical proxy. In the schools that we found, uh, most of them are up in the 90 percentile, 95 uh, or above even. And that's telling. The biggest thing that I try to use is to answer a question by asking a question. By showing the student how you can read a problem and really decompose it on your own, they will be able to feel the confidence that they could tackle a problem without hand-holding. Math creates these sort of Rosetta Stones that are able to translate from one area into the other area. General themes you might look for would be, um, was there some symmetry? Is there something about the problem where one side looked exactly like the other side and one side was easier to work with. So you work on the easy side, but it tells you information about the hard side. A picture, like, like they say, is worth a thousand words. I think it's worth more than that. <laughs> a picture can open up things to you that you completely would not have seen without a picture. Just to, to see that look on their face and know that it's there and to see the joy for them that it's, it's clicked, it's coming together. And they're, and they're seeing this beautiful thing, whether it's a beautiful pattern or they've figured out this puzzle they've been working on. 
when we first approached teachers, we were a little bit concerned how they would see us. Would they object to, to us targeting just a small sector of students who showed high potential, or would they embrace us? And it turns out the latter is the case. The current economic crisis is definitely making lives hard for millions of people across the country, but there's still ways so that you can like succeed in this really harsh economy. And most of those careers you can go to involve math. One of the goals of the program is to build an intellectual community among students at underserved schools. What we found was that when they came back into their school, after having this intense three-week experience, they brought a lot of that back with them and shared it with their friends. Mathematics kind of can help you out with your expectations by giving you a hint as to, as to what comes next, <laughs> which I appreciate. You know, I also appreciate the unpredictability. There are so many times where if I were to go with my gut instinct, I would be completely wrong. But when I follow, follow out these logical steps, it takes me somewhere I, I never expected. I guess you would say that I'm more of a pure ma mathematician in the sense that the applications are great, don't get me wrong, but for me math is cool for math's sake. I don't need for something to even have a real world tie for it to still be cool mathematically. If someone d discovers something that makes it useful in the future, that's great. But it's, it was cool even before anyone found a use for it. And one day I actually took a picture of the problem that I did because it was such a beautiful problem. And I remember thinking, this is gorgeous. How can you not see the beauty that is in this problem? People always associate math with science, right? But math is not a science. Math is an art. Because math does not depend on the scientific method. Math is about taking these fundamental principles and using the, this enormous creativity. And that creativity that the mathematician uses is not unlike the creativity that the painter or the musician or the writer uses to create uh, their work. I definitely think that the idea of eliminating the arts from the curriculum is not just ridiculous, it's terrible, it's very destructive and uh, we shouldn't do it. It's part of an integral education and it is certainly linked to creativity in mathematics. Math is the most pure of every single subject that you could ever possibly think of. In my classroom at home, I have a poster of the different sciences, the biology, sociology, physics, chemistry, and every branch relies on another branch for something. And math is the only subject that you don't have to have that reliance. You would be hard pressed to find any discipline that speaks to people, to speaks to everyone on the face of this planet as much as math does. There are situations where you can have a mathematical experience that can really carry you for years to come. And this is one of the things that we've, we're hoping to create with the summer program for mathematical problem solving.